energy in a creative um, faction that it can't be duplicated. That's why there's, it's still like there's only one Tupac out there. Everybody can try to copy him, but yeah. they can't duplicate that energy. And they're still talking about it. Can you believe how relevant he is this day, today? It's like, I can't even believe it. It's like, but I think he deserves it because I think that makes up for him leaving so early. He left so soon. But yeah, yeah. You can yeah. feel his, you know, his energy is still all that he deserves to live this long. He would have been like 50 something, right? It's like, he'd be, he'd and be he would have been a beautiful today. man. Oh, 54. He would have been a beautiful man. A, you know, grown man. He was, because you know, like I said, he, um, in another interview, he would have a ball because he was a, he had a good heart. To start. He was a good guy. You know, just imagine somebody. You remember he went and beat the cops up because he saw somebody been beaten. You know, just that was in Atlanta. Imagine, you yeah, know, yeah. who really yeah. does that? Like, what kind of person does that? Because anything could have happened to him, right? He could have died, but he didn't even think about that. He just saw somebody that was being mistreated, and then he was like. And that is, that was him. That was like a natural instinct. And, you know, just a lot of, he got around the wrong situation. And it just brought out the worst in him. But he was still, during that time, I still saw so much good in him. He was good. And that's what um, he deserved to be. So that's why I like that they're still talking about him now. People are kind of seeing what he was going through and why doing certain things, you know, that weren't really positive, like all this stuff in Vegas, you know, that was just like peer pressure, you know, it wasn't really what, you know, what he probably would have done if he had not been around certain people, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, and you working with him and everything now, we've heard many stories about how he could be in the studio, like he was, he was a one take type of guy. He was very abrasive yeah. at times. Like he was a workaholic. Like, what was your experience like working with? Him? Yeah, all that. He was all that. He was really, um, like I say, he was just like really, a, you know, supportive of you when you were in the studio. He was very serious. First of all, he was fast, and he, <laughs> you know, was just. Um, he was so creative. I think that's why I wish he could have lived because I just wanted to see him just go further. He was like a conductor, you know. He told everybody what to do, and he liked to do stuff on the spot. He wanted to be natural, like you couldn't go home and write. You had to do it right there. You know, you had to sing right there. You had to come up with whatever you had to come up with right there, and he was being there pushing you. I just, he was so, um, I mean, I've never met anybody that was so creative and so he can just come up with stuff so quickly. And, you know, I did the stuff with him for Hammer. That was another thing. He was so into um, really making sure that Hammer made a comeback. He was like, he thought he deserved to be taken seriously. And he was telling me, he had, he had to do this. You know what? I want you to sing on this song. And we would do so many songs for Hammer. Like, all the, it was great. And Johnny J., I don't know if you know about him. He was rest in peace, like, Johnny J. Yes. Yes. yes rest in yes. peace. Oh, my God. That was my guy. We were, yes. I was always with him doing stuff. They both were really trying to, because, you know, this is a time when I, I didn't know. I was still with Dre at that point. I think, I think I left him later and went to Mac 10. I signed with Mac 10. But at the time, I think I was with, with Dre. But, you know, Tupac and Suge would try to, you know, Suge would try to say a little stuff like, oh, Nancy, why don't you come over here? But he wasn't really, he didn't really mess with me before <laughs> Tupac came that much because there was a whole lot of stuff. But he had artists that he wanted Dre to work with, and then Dre wanted to work with me. So they didn't really, you know, they kind of took stuff out on me for no reason but for that. It's, the thing is, everybody wanted Dre's attention, right? And, and when Tupac came, of course, you know, he kind of took all the air out the room, but Dre was still the one that, you know, the one that was in demand. Even Tupac wanted, but, you know, he, Tupac got Dre. He got, you know, because Dre really didn't want to work with anybody at the time. He was on his way out. He was really out. He had one foot in the door, one foot out, doing aftermath right, and I was, 
I would come back there to work with Nate Dog and Snoop and do stuff with them and then um, Pac, of course, you know. So, you know, it was like a crazy time. Was, but I do remember how much Pac was really into, you know, even me. Like, he really wanted to uh, have great songs for me. I mean, he really wanted me to um, have great songs. He really took a lot of time. He was really... I did like eight songs with him in such a short time, and we had planned to do more. And then I did the uh, Hammer song. So he was really focused. He had a lot of energy. He was so, um, you know, like like I said, he was like had his eye. That's why I was like, I wonder if he knew something. It seemed like he was trying to rush and do so much stuff because he didn't have time. Or maybe that was just his work, you know, his work ethic that he just did songs, but he was always, and then he would do a song, and the next song would come up, and he would just, he could rap off, you know, off the top of the head, he didn't have to, you know, and all of the um, outlaws, they had to come in, they had to, you know, write, like, they couldn't, like, go home and write, and, you know, prepare, they had to do everything right there. When the beat came on, they had to go. You know, if you ever meet me, they'll tell you they had to just go. And I thought, and I think that's when you get the best out of people. You know, if you see mm-hmm. that clip, there's a clip, you know, you know, of me and him in the studio. Where I'm like, oh, come on, Pac, can I do it again? Let me do it again, whatever, whatever. And, you know, because I used to always want to do stuff over, not with him, but with Dre. And a lot of people, like, everything I did on Snoop's album was like one take. Like, it would never, I was like, mm. oh, no, that's it. That's it. And I wouldn't want to perfect it, but... You know, it was good for that, but I would always know I could do better because, you know, one time when I just had learned, like, I would learn the stuff right then. It was like, okay, we'll do this, and I would just do it, and I was going. And then I was like, well, no, I can do it better. No, 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 it's good. Dre was like, sometime that he was like, well, I got what I want, so you can try something if you want. And then I was like, okay, I got mine, don't worry, whatever he would do. But Tupac was one of the ones that, he let me, he was like, like he was like, oh come on, Nancy, and he was okay. Go ahead and do it. And then I would either make it better or do something. He was like, okay, all right, that's good. So and then that was a few times we would do that. But he normally would, you know, he because I think that he felt that everybody was like him because he can go on the booth and just go from the top to bottom, just off the top, and just like it would all be so good. And he could do it over and over again. That to me was incredible. I mean, you know, some people can do that, but it's rare. I think that's rare. I know it's rare. <laughs> you know. I mean, you and him had you and him had that New York connection though, because a lot of people forget that Pop was born in New York. Right. I forgot home. about that too. I didn't know mm-hmm. back then. I don't think I really. Yeah, he was born in Harlem. I, I heard back then. Yep. I just always thought he was from the West Coast until I found out. You know, I don't even know if it was before he died. I can't remember, but because I just saw him as you know. West Coast, I remember him from Digital Underground and all that stuff. And I was so happy when I found him. I knew that, you know, not that, even though he was probably raised a lot in L.A., but, you know, he had a little edge, too, about himself. He was streetwise, more so than a lot of L.A. people, you know. People from back east are, like, a little fast, more fast-paced in L.A., you know. It's kind of laid back in L.A., you know. Everybody's. And they weren't as conscious as they are now. People from back east, they were more like, you know, Tupac was raised with the um, Panthers and stuff. Panther. Out here they had like the five, right, the five percenters. The Muslims like yeah, really he had a Panther mentality. Strong in the East Coast. Yeah, as but back in L.A., they didn't really have that. Like you know, five percenters and all that. You know, it was like really strong in the East Coast. Oh, um. Now, one of the records, other records that you guys did, I 